that got $45 billion of taxpayer money and uh, during the, the bailout, during the Troubled Asset Relief Program, right? Uh, now the CEO, you know, he's been cutting back a little bit, right? He's been he's been modest in his his executive compensation. So in 2010, right, he only took home 1.2 million dollars that year in salary. How, how many people had a, a 1.2 million dollar salary? Oh, awesome. Uh, last year. Last year. Oh, not last year. No, okay. <laughs> uh, this is a tremendous, tremendous. Uh, you know, this is a like on the scale of bank CEO money. This is actually pretty small. But it's, it's pretty ballsy, right? I mean, we've got a company here that basically was going to go out of business unless we saved it, right? And we did save it, right? It was too big to fail, right? And now it's back to its old tricks again. And what are those tricks? Uh, well, one of those tricks is basically uh, foreclosing on people's houses without any real legal basis, right? There's these things called robo-signers. Anybody know what a robo-signer is? Right? It's basically a way of automating the foreclosure process, running slipshod over any sort of legal protections that might be there, and foreclosing on a mass scale. We have a foreclosure crisis in this country, and banks like Bank of America are behind it. Uh, as, late, uh, as recently as August of this year, uh, Bank of America, along with Wells Fargo, other banks, were lying on paperwork in order to support their right to foreclose. Right? So this is a deeply, deeply, uh, this industry of large banks is deeply involved in this kind of dispossession that's going on through foreclosure, right? This massive grab of money that's happening through the inflation of prices, the extension of, of easy credit, and then the subsequent crash, where they're basically profiting off of this crash. Uh, the banks provided, now I want to say a couple of other things here, because, you know, we can talk about the foreclosure crisis, we can talk about the short-term, you know, trouble that has happened in the economy lately, but this also intersects with the long-term economic crisis, the crisis of under and misdevelopment here in Baltimore City, the lack of community control over the instruments of financial uh, development. Um, and that has to do with payday loans, right? Payday loans are the worst of the worst. They are exploitative, right? They have much, much higher interest rates, right? If you're rich, you get a wonderful interest rate if you need to borrow money, right? Uh, maybe you take out a credit card if you're not so rich, right? And you pay a little bit more. The worst loans are payday loans. The loans that people who have no other choice, who need money to pay the rent, to feed their kids, they go to the payday companies, right? And they put a lien on their future paychecks. Where did this industry come from, right? Did it just spring up out of nowhere? No, it was capitalized by banks like Bank of America. Bank of America was one of the early financers of the payday loan industry. They created this industry and they continue to sustain it by extending it capital. Right? So there's a project, a deliberate project of targeting the poor, right? targeting in particular the urban poor that this, these companies right, are actually actively carrying out. And when we bailed them out, when we gave them $45 billion dollars, what we did not do was ensure that they could not engage in these kind of practices. And that's what we have to work for now. Okay, so now let's make some noise and walk up the street to another uh, malefactor to talk about. Yeah. Yeah.